believe that the way you look up somebody on Instagram or you Google them now, in seven years, you're gonna meet somebody in real life and you're gonna go look at their, their public wallet. You got your perspective. I just wanna be happy, don't you wanna be happy? Gary, welcome to the Nifty Show. It's great to see you, Trav and Joel. It's a real pleasure. Thank you so much. Are you eating nuts there? Uh, grapes. Okay. So maybe going nuts. So, you know, you're a little late. I know you want to buy the Jets, but as you can see from the photo, I pulled already, it up. I bought them. <laughs> yep. They're mine. I, Not didn't, even... I, didn't real, I didn't realize garbage pail kids and street fighter could be so profitable. It's amazing what NFTs will do. Well, you're about to find out because you are getting ready to launch your first NFT collection that yes. you have called V Friends. Tell us about That's them. True. 10,255 tokens, a little head nod to CryptoPunks in, in some way, but a little bit, a little, a little different number. Um, when, you know, in 27, in 2016, when did Ethereum come out? You know? 2015? 15, 15 yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So 15, probably South by 15, but I don't know the timing, definitely then by 16. An incredible uh, friend of mine by the name of Aaron Battalion, who is the CTO of Living Social, Groupon's biggest computer time has gone on to become a big, you know, Silicon Valley technologist, VC, brilliant guy, tech, tech, tech boy. Set, you know, we we're sitting in a jam session at South by and really broke down Ethereum for me because the year before that whole crew that would get together, we all bought Bitcoin. And so, you know, you're, you're starting to get into that stuff. You're starting to like learn it. And so 17 was when I really was looking at ETH and then, uh, you know, other blockchain stuff hearing about. And then, and, and, and basically when I understood that you could put contracts on that, that's, that was like fascinating to me, right? Like you can put a lease on it, contracts, contracts, fine. Fast forward um, to, you know, you've hit me up, Joe, we have a great relationship for the, our web 2.0 days and like, I'm aware of like Wax and Ethereum and seeing stuff. I, I invested in a company called Roll in Vayner RC several years ago for like individual coins, personal brand. Like you can imagine with all this stuff and then the garage sailing and the collectible, you can imagine, but it's all floating in ETH or out there for me as I'm, you know, navigating my life. Um, very, very similar for me to Web 2.0 social media, right? Like watched Friendster, watched MySpace, you know, doing my wine thing. And I'm like, eh, this thing feels different, right? And Neil, look, you know, these blogs, waxy.org and Jason Kotke and Neil Dash and like, hmm, this TechCrunch thing, slash dot, you know, you know, and I'm like, there's something brewing. And, and what I, for me, I'm, you know, a pop culture retailer businessman so for me, I'm always thinking like, when's it gonna be ready for prime time? Even sports cards, a year I looked at, and that was something I very much understood. It was like, okay, now I'll talk because- And they've because, come back in a big way, like sports huge, cards have just blown huge. up. So for me, it was really this winter when I, you know, for, you know, April through September was incredible hardcore navigation of a thousand person company, a lot of fear with COVID mm. layoffs than hiring, like just, you know, gnarly kind of like 15 hour a day life, just trying to make sure everyone's healthy and safe and the business is okay. And, you know, you kind of almost need like a distraction when you get out of like a eight month, you know, like you're, when you're a captain, it's an eight month storm and you mm. finally get to calmer waters. You're like, let me go get a beer. And like, and that beer for me was, was NFTs. I was like, I need some, let, let me, you know, this has been going on. Let me dig in here a little bit deeper. And, um, and that thing that happens in my life where I'm like, oh, we're, okay, it's 11.45 p.m. It's not 6.30, it's not 2.30. This is getting close. Let me get my shit together because I like being involved in consumer stuff. I like when things are ready. And, but I also don't want to say shit and I also want, you know, this is the weirdest one because the last two things, web one, web two, for me, nobody knew who the fuck I was. I had no audience, nothing. So in general, I like doing homework. This was even more dangerous and I'll continue to do that on podcasts like this. I'm like, look, I don't know what that means. Or like, you know, like I'm not there yet. Or, you know, like, 
all these things that everybody has to do when they go through their journey. You know, there's so many new chains. There's so much going on. You know, I decided to do V friends on Ethereum. So there's all those dynamics of level two and gas and all the things that people take shots at Ethereum for, which I'm empathetic and I understand why. There's, you know, incredibly cool stuff going on on other, on other chains. I want to understand it all. Immutable this for level two, wax with you, Joel, and what you guys are doing, like polka dot, Solano, Cardano. Like, you know, you're just kind of looking at it all. For me, though, much like web one and web two, I didn't want to learn Ruby on Rails, right? I didn't, I didn't want to learn how Amazon services worked. And going way back, I wasn't learning how to code an ASP for Wine Library's first site. I didn't care how we had a, you know, I wanted to be dangerous enough so I wasn't an idiot. But, you know, for me, this is a very interesting time because with this, there's a, almost a requirement to get a little bit deeper. You know, just a hair. And there's also money being exchanged in a very different way. You know, that first time you connect a MetaMask and you buy something and that 40 second delay happens. I'm like, wait a minute, where, where you know, like, like, you know, I'm Petra. One of the biggest things I'm going to do this, like the 24 hours before my launch here is probably make 800 videos and go live and be like, okay, I'm aware that some of you are going to buy something for the first time. Let me tell you exactly the fear you're going to have for 49 seconds. Um, so just trying to get my shit together, you know, uh, and also trying to, um, you know, jumping into different discords, reading, you know, I get so passionate that I always worry that my excitement is confused with thinking I know. So I've been very aggressive with my words of like, I'm in my journey. I'll talk about, when I get comfortable with something, I'll talk about it. I understand why people buy things. Let's start there. Mm -hmm. I may not understand every single T and I on underlining tech, but I'm going to listen and try to at least have something I can hang with. Um, but I definitely understand why people buy things and how. I understand how markets get built and what becomes of them. And that's why I've been telling people that 99% of the projects may not end up being a great investment because I understand supply and demand. Mm -hmm. But it's an incredible time to be alive. I can't believe we're here, right? Like it's like, you know, after going through Web 2.0, I didn't know how long, if ever, would it be before my juices in my body felt like, oh, I want to stay up at all hours of night and learn and meet people and all, you know, and this one's so fun, right? Like everybody I'm like following or DMing with or discording with, they've got their fucking favorite NFT as their, as their avatar, the metaverse is brewing, you know, all this stuff is going on. And for me, what a lot of people don't know is two years ago, I got very far along the path of creating uh, toys that were called workplace warriors. And mm -hmm. what, 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 you know, Joel, you know this about me. I know you know this about me. I do read a lot, all my comments, not like I did in 207 to 211. I have way less time, but I, I read a lot. And, you know, I get a lot because of the way I communicate and what I talk about. A lot of people that are like, hey, thanks for the video. I just watched your video at lunch. My boss is such a dick. It made me feel better or this and that. And, and like to the point where I was like, wait a minute, this is gonna be cool. I like business, so that's me. But I also love collecting, that's me. And I love having a selfless and selfish thing, right? The whole like, right, it works. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna do a toy. Nice little $30 toy, oh, this is my shit, this is what I like. People put an empathetic elephant on their fucking, you know, on their desk. And when their boss is a dick and they look at it, they'll think of me that says, fuck you. And look, you know, like, I was like, this is going to really be good. So I really went down that path heavily, molding, design, fucking, and then, you know, and then got busy and then boom, COVID. you know, it was one of those things mm -hmm. where I'll address this in Q1. And there's so much to do when you're creating a thing like that, the supply chain and all these oh, things, you got to deal with, all this physical so, shit. So you nailed it. You knew exactly where I was going. So now I'm deep, I'm buying some punks, I'm learning, um, I'm, I'm looking at all, all the superhero cool shit you're doing, Joel. Look at, I'm just looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm like, wait a minute, fuck, I'm gonna be able to do my thing on this. Because what, what happened with me is what happened with Wine Library TV. I'm like, oh shit, the internet's changing. The way I sell wine for my dad is changing. What do I do, what do I do? Oh, this YouTube thing's gonna be the biggest of them all. No, I know about wine. It was so left field. I mean, you probably remember, Julie. It was so left field. Everything was tech. Dignation, Zay Frank. It was all tech. 
And then this guy in New Jersey with a wine store starts this show and it worked. And I don't know how to do things when I think the world's changing without throwing myself into it. Right. You play like, with the toys. That's how you, you learn. Toys. So like, I'm like, I'm going to make my own. I'm going to learn a ton of shit. And guess what? I have. And one, you know, and you know, the web three stuff is, is really intense and really fun and, and I'm learning and I'm enjoying it. And I'm just so happy to be a part of the community and like, um, and thank you for having me on the show. It's such a friendly community. One thing I've noticed about the NFT space is like, it seems like everyone's sort of uplifting each other, right? They're, outside, they're, they're, outside. Cheering, they're cheering each other on. Outside of the different chains, a little bit of that gets a little, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and outside of like cryptocurrencies versus NFTs, yeah, you're seeing incredible behavior and rooting for, um, listen, there's a lot of money. There's too much money going on. I think that that is the probably the thing I'm most worried about. With social, you were actually just building brand and relationship and reputation, which kind of like, helped I, you know i don't think i think it's going to be a little weird here trav unfortunately like there's too much money being exchanged like i've already seen it from a lot of a couple of people like dm me they're like oh are you upset that other things launched right before your thing i'm like no way first of all the things they were referencing were from og ogs and i was like you know who am i to? second of all you know one of the things i'll tell anybody who's listening this is just more macro Anytime you think someone's taking something out of you, you were completely confused about how the world actually works. Huh. The, wor the world is fundamentally abundant. Like there's plenty of room to buy punks and to buy, you know, to buy cardboard heroes and to buy, by the way, this is what's going on with the art world and the collectible world. All my sports card friends are like, what the fuck? You know, why are you so focus on this? Like you put in so much into the sports cards. I'm like, both. I'm like, they're gonna help each other. Topps' project on wax is gonna help its cardboard and vice versa. I think the world is, if you do good shit, it will be just okay. Don't blame somebody else's success for your lack of execution. Absolutely. So you're going all in. Uh, we did, you know, I knew when you started drawing these characters, you were going somewhere with it. I said, we got to get on. We got to talk about it. Um, I, I brought you up to speed on NFTs with my knowledge. I told you about wax. You decided to go with Ethereum. You got to do what you got to do. But let's talk about what you actually are doing here, because these V friends, these are not just picture NFTs that Gary has drawn. You have tapped into one of what we think is the key use case cases for NFTs and that each one is tied to something real world. Correct. To me, where I was starting this, thank you for bringing me back, Joe. You've always been good at that. You know, uh, um, I'm throwing a massive conference called VCon where every one of these tokens. So this is actually, since we're looking at it, this is how it breaks down. There's 10,255 tokens, 9,400 of them. As you can see, our admission tokens, they come in different rarities, as you can see. Um, and those are, to your point, if you scroll up, Joe, if you don't mind, um, if you click VCon at the tippy top, just for the visual. Yep. So oh. what's, in what's interesting about this, if you scroll down, um, so VCon is a conference I'm throwing. Uh, actually, can you go to VCon.co? I don't know if you can do a, I maybe. can do amazing things. Yeah, because really uh, because I have the internet, I can't type though. Because I have the internet at my no, that is not it. Oh, VCom, I got myself involved there. Yeah, that's it. You're bragging on a little too early. Like, oh yeah, I can do all the whoops. Yeah, except go anywhere. <laughs> so every token, all ten thousand two hundred fifty-five, are going to be invited to VCon. That's how you get in. To me, this is very. You'll see so many inspirations of my past: South by Southwest, Web Summit, Tech Country Disrupt right? Like, mm. you know, all the things that shaped me, I want to throw that conference with a little bit of music and entertainment. And actually, believe it or not, it's basically all those things I mentioned with Coachella and Rolling Loud with summer camp. So one of the things I'm very excited about, you'll see it as we go back to VCon, um, it's some of the tokens I did are called competition tokens, um, which are like, tokens to have one-on-one -on -one access to play me in ping pong and in checkers and all this other stuff. And you can go back to scroll up because this is the smaller one. Why don't you go meet the friends? Yep. Right there. Meet. Yep. Um, 
So if you scroll down, right? So there's three, there's, there's access tokens. So let's go back, 9,400 to the conference, 555 called gift goats. You buy this token, you connect your wallet and put your address and stick with me here, Trav, six times a year, minimally. Six. O- over three years, because all these tokens are three-year things, you know, off-chain tokens. Six times a year, I send you surprise and delight gifts. Mm. Thank you, Joel. So nice. as you can imagine, what's really cool about this is once I see what everybody pays for it, I take a step back and I'm starting to reverse engineer. For example, if the first gift I send is more than people paid for the goddamn token, shit's gonna get really weird. And this is and I this was important to me for a reason. If this just was my doodles, I'd have no control after the fact unless I do what I'm up to, which is I'm gonna spend the rest of my life building this intellectual property. So I'm gonna try to do cartoons and backpacks and toys and movies and streetwear brands. So I'm gonna really, this is probably where my career is going. This, this is my now intellectual property. This is my Zelda. This is my Pokemon. This is my Scooby-Doo. And I'm gonna see how far I can take it. And I think I'm very good at building brand. And, you know, there's, and so that's to, the tokens. And then there's 300 access tokens, which I think, you know, it's funny. I went back and forth on doing this because I didn't want really to be about me and my time. So much of this is about building up characters that represent the things I talk about so that I'm not the front man of my passions. But I did want to send a blueprint. As the project was evolving, I was noticing a lot more people coming out that had audiences and doing very bullshit projects that I thought were money grabs. And I thought a lot of people were gonna lose a lot of money and then hurt the space. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna put a blueprint of what I think a lot of people are missing in this project. And that's what I think with access tokens. So with access tokens, you buy the token, you get the collectible, you still get in addition the conference. But if you scroll down, Joel, in addition to this being a ticket to the conference, for example, there's 125 hangout hawks. All 125 people there are part of a virtual hangout group with me that gets together five times a year for 45 minutes, Q and A, just with me. Then you see the re- in-person ones, dinner deer, lunch ladybug. Those are literally having dinner together. And what I'm excited about is I'm going to work my tail off that if somebody buys dinner deer which is you know, not gonna be inexpensive, but they're still gonna own the next two years rights to that ticket. So as you can imagine, they may be able to have dinner with me and then if things go well, have an asset where they'll be able to make a decision if they wanna come back next year or put it up. So it's important for me to innovate on the multi-year aspect. And then, and then you get into the one-on-one access again. 85 of them are, are virtual FaceTime characters. So FaceTime Fox is a five minute FaceTime with me. Again, multi-year thing. And then you get into the crazy one of ones. Garage sailing Yale. Literally go garage sailing with me for four hours on that episode of, <laughs> of Trash Talk. Uh, Podcast Panther, I think is a great one. Uh, you buy that token, I become a 45 minute guest on your podcast. So I can see a lot of people seeing that as value. Uh, Workout Wolf, literally work out with me and my trainer. Gone fishing fish, literally a four hour, three hour, I think, fishing trip with me. I mean, that's some quality time. Um, uh, wine shopping spree woodchuck, which is really exciting. Um, What's that, the Kino Koala? Do they get to keynote with you or what? Kino Koala is an unlimited token to every public keynote I give in the world where you get a VIP ticket and green room access meet and greet prior to it. Nice. So what I'm hoping there for, Joel, is that somebody decides to treat me like the Grateful Dead. And literally, I see them at every city in the world. (laughs) (laughs) Vayner heads. These kind of remind me of sweet sweet pickles back in the day. I remember these like. Yeah. Yes. Remember? Yes. I remember these. They all have the nice. They all have a little good feel good story behind them. Yeah, they they broke it. Actually, I looked at it because I was like, wait a minute. Somebody said it to me when I was doing it. I was like, shit, let me look at it. They had a little bit of a mix. There's a, this is a little more positive. Um, yeah. uh, so, you know, listen, there's also, if you keep scrolling down, something I'm really proud of, uh, uh, the competition ones here. Maybe my favorite one, Uno Unicorn. That's literally a four person Uno game. Three people will buy that token. We're gonna have a four person Uno so I can draw four. Uh, and Shouldn't uh, it just be called a Unicorn? I'm just thinking. <laughs> on some real shit. 
I'm devastated right now. <laughs> yeah. Right now, right this second, I'm devastated. That is so much better. <laughs> God damn it. Look, on the flip side, I think I did a good job with the bowling boa. Turning a pin into a snake, I thought that, yeah. that was creative. That's, that's pretty creative. Thank you, sir. Uh, finding an animal that rhymes with ping pong was tough, but there is a Kalong bat out there. Thank God. So the ping pong Kalong. Um, and then if you scroll down, Joel, uh, five scholarship accesses. These are people who are just going to submit. I'm going to give them five 45-minute sessions with me, 30 hours with VaynerX senior executives, and a paid uh, internship to any VaynerX company. Uh, on the 10% royalties on the secondary transactions, I'm keeping nine. I'm giving 1% to five charities I pick each year. So a lot of fun dynamics, real fun, big ambitious project. Fucking going for it. Yeah, I think I think this is really cool. As we've talked about this, Joel and I, you know, over the time, is like, you know, this is it, NFTs and social tokens. Really, I think the combination between the two give access to your favorite content creators in a whole new way, right? 100%. And you're taking that shit to the next level with these NFTs being specific interactions, which nobody's done. I've not seen anybody do specific interactions. This equals that, and you get to do this with me. A lot of people are just, here is a cool collectible and enjoy it and have fun. You're actually diving in and you've built a strategy and you set a blueprint around developing access to Gary V and inspiring people on an ongoing basis. I think it's brilliant. Thank you. And then for me, what's really exciting, Trav, is I'm petrified. Like, I, I, I find people so fascinating. People are like, oh, short-term thing. I'm like, are you out of your mind? If this fails, I'm dead. Like I'm spending the rest of my fucking life trying to make some of these characters mean something. Like why do I go to garage sales and buy Thundercats? Cause it eventually meant something. And thus that meant like it was worth something versus another piece of plastic at a garage sale from something that nobody's ever heard of, right? Why is, why is it Garbage Pail Kids and Street Fighter and other cool things on wax, right? Like, cause those meant something. Like mm -hmm. now, now, if you notice, I created something that had a lot of real life value in the first three years, that gives me time to turn the tokens and the art into meaningful collectible assets. I go and land a Netflix cartoon deal for four of these characters in a series, we're off to the races if that series hits. This These is the pathway to the Jets. This is it right here. I think so. Yeah, I, well, two, a couple of things. First of all, um, you're gonna kill it or I should more aptly say, you're going to crush it. These are going to sell out so ridiculously fast. Your head is going to swim. It's going to go, what the hell just happened? I have no question. We see a lot of these launches and we know which properties, you know, are going to resonate and which are not. We usually call them pretty good. Sometimes we miss, I'm not going to miss with this one. And I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. Thank it's you. going to sell out super fast. So you don't have to be nervous about it. Here's the thing you're talking about. This is the next part of your life. It's not just the brand. You are putting yourself so deeply into delivering after yes. this purchase that, yes, it literally is the yes. next part of your life. You're mm. going to be busy as hell. You know, you, you know who was the happiest? D-Rock and my video creative team. They're so pumped. <laughs> Because they're like, oh, this is fucking gold. Like we can finally make a vlog. You're so boring. Like you, you, work, <laughs> you know, you're set, like fine. But how many episodes of Daily V or Weekly V can people watch of you being in meetings for 16 hours? Like this is going to be funny. Like you're going to, yeah. they, they also know me. When I lose an Uno on some reverse card and then a draw four, I'm going to be pissed and it's going to be funny. You know, it's funny. The other part of this, Joel, is... And I think, again, this is what's so fun to talk to you guys because we come from a time where we shared a lot of stages and back rooms. And I'm so uniquely built for the way I built this because I genuinely love people. Like to me, I'm excited about meeting Barry from Indiana in a ping pong game or having dinner with Sarah and Rick and John. Like, I mean, this is like, I'm humbled by it. I enjoy it. I think a lot of people who are lucky enough to have big audiences actually don't like it. They're a little more introverted and I understand that. And maybe they'll do very different versions of this or maybe just the conference or maybe just you know, a, a hard good that comes along with it. For me, there is nothing that is more valuable than someone's time and the access to their brain, their heart. And I'm, uh, and I'm hoping it inspires people. And I think, you know, I wanna buy, and you know, I built this with the intent of like some of the players that play behind you, sir. 
Like I want to throw the football with Zach Wilson, my new quarterback. I'll pay for that shit, especially if I own the token after it. Like I'm built it, you know, I mean, so I'm hoping, you know, cook, you think about it, famous chefs, authors, it's not just about influencers and celebrities. If somebody's the foremost expert of beekeeping and she puts out 50 co- coins, tokens, NFTs, and, and five of them are the gold honey ones, and those come with a two hour session with her of like really doing it, that's meaningful. If I could do it with a music, if a music producer put this out and I want to be a music producer and I get three hours in studio with him or her, I mean, this is really meaningful. And I think, I think the other thing you have to think about, one thing I did very late, so I don't know, I didn't know as well as, I, don't, I still am a little nervous because it's dragging. So, but as I started seeing demand building a little bit more, I'm like, wait a minute. I started taking more tokens off that I'm holding for myself because I want to give away more to my Discord community because, you know, all of a sudden, you know, things can get expensive and, you, you know, so you got to think about all that stuff. And I've been enjoying the strategy and the thinking of it. Yeah. What are the prices going to be? Are these all going to be auctioned off or how is that working? So all Dutch auction, Trav. I was very worried about what I knew I would have is 30, 40, 50 people. I haven't released the prices yet, Joel. Um, But Trav, I knew there was like a hundred people that were smart enough to know this is actually buying into me forever. And so they were going to buy them all. I was very worried about that. I heard a couple things just like, just not like heard in the, in rumors, I mean, talking to people and I could just see, I was like, Uh-oh. Some of these whales will do that stuff, man. They're going to yeah. go out there and, and grab And, and I, had a, I had an extra problem. I have new whales that have never bought anything that really know me and have been really following me and are like, you know, these are people that are offering a hundred million dollar investment to VaynerMedia to have a small percentage of the company because mm. they believe in me so much and they can't. They So a lot of people are, so as soon as I saw them hovering, I'm like, fuck that. I, I don't need a headline that says Gary V sells playing tennis with him for a million dollars. I was petrified of that douchery. Mm. So I capped it and I'm doing a Dutch auction. So starting price and it goes down. One of, so it starts at a price and it goes down. Mm. And it basically in essence becomes a buy it now game, right? You kind of like are playing the game of like, do you want to snipe it at this price or not? Is somebody else going to come in? Um, so the floor on the majority of them are 0.5 ETH, which is obviously moving a lot since this project started. Mm. So, but for me, I'm pouring it back into the conference and into the gift goats. Like if this does uncomfortably well, you know, it means I'm going to throw the best conference in the world. <laughs> you know, that, you know, I'm treating this as an enterprise and as a, a real corporation that like, when I look at Workout Wolf right now, Joe's got that up right in the forefront. When I look at that, right, I'm like, I should probably build a $50 million protein shake business around him. Like I'm capable of that. You know, mm-hmm. people are very confused by my business vacuum. They're so, they're so focused on Gary B, the character. In the last 10 years, I started Resi with Ben Leventhal, the restaurant app. It sold for $200 million to Amex. I started Empathy Wines with two former interns. It sold for close to nine figures to Constellation Brands. Vayner X has eight companies underneath it. I run it day to day. Um, and it, it's a global company doing north of $250 million in revenue. We just opened up Mexico City. My brother and I started a meaningful sports agency. We're a major player in UFC immediately. You know, 40 plus NFL players. So like, I, I, I'm excited because I know what I'm going to do as the operator, as Gary Vaynerchuk, the business operator against the intellectual property of this project. So that's nothing makes me happier than that because then I can really come through. So you were going to launch on, uh, on my birthday. Thanks for that. But, uh, that was for, the single reason, by the way, I know so happy birthday. Thank you for whatever what you reason. What are you 40 now? Yes. Yeah, stop it. You, you flatterer with your words, <laughs> 57 there, junior 57. I wish I look, your hair's better than mine. I'm impressed. <laughs> you work a lot harder. Um, the the launch is being pushed out to what day in what time do you know I know this I know this is airing on Friday I I promised that I wouldn't even put this out because I don't want to put anybody in a precarious spot but I'm early next week I'm feeling confident to say that okay so they need to and I'm basically... definitely and I'm definitely definitely giving everybody now because of the way it's gone down a full 24 hour notice okay. and then I'll do it 
Yeah, you'll post on your Twitter and your Discord. Everywhere. I'll tell you yep. what, here's Please. here's what you need to do. You know, whenever we do a sale, we always buy a little of our own because we like to play. So I would say buy at least one that gives you time with yourself so you can have some time off. Oh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> hey, what happens to this? I'm curious about the mechanics mm-hmm. on this. It's like, say I buy one of the one of the things is one of those three year deals where you get a dinner with Gary or whatever yep. five times a year, or, or you there's only a one time use and you use it. What's the stop? Is it is it burnable? Like once they once they are using we, it, they got to send we, it to you, then it gets burned. Or how do you take it out of circulation it, so somebody doesn't try to sell it again to somebody else? It's validated on chain. Now, how wait? How are you doing that? Do you know? Um, yeah. So what what we did with um, I, I to your point. So Jim and the team at NFT Forty Two have, have just been remarkable OG guys. I don't, I, I don't want to miss, especially publicly, miss explain it, but I'd love to jam with you guys offline. Um, I've, I've had like four of my other hardcore nerd friends be like, yep, good. So um, we're, we're validating in that way and, and making sure that it's also like piping to, um, um, to OpenSea uh, and anywhere else. I'm petrified of that part. Uh, Trav of anybody being confused that's probably stood me up the longest Mm. what if somebody gets confused that it it no longer has the access right um we did that and we we've encountered that because we sold our nifty box as a membership card and we did a couple that were just good for a month says right on it november 2020 but people were then selling them after and somebody could buy something that has no use what they have to do is they got to send it to you and then it's validated and you could actually send them back a different version, one that's already been used. That way they no longer have that version to be able to sell it I feel, somebody I else. Feel, and try to I feel it. incredibly comfortable in what, what they built, but I also want to make sure I speak to it. And obviously, as we get closer here, I will have all those T's and I's crossed. Right on. Understood. So are there any of them that are just purely collectibles or does everything yes. has function? Well, no, no, actually, no. Everything has function. Every everything. single token... Wow. It is a three-year ticket to VCon. Everyone. What? Three-year I, ticket to VCon. That's beautiful. Yeah, that, that, we gotta get a, that, I got We got to get these, Joel. That, we got to go to, we gotta that, go to VCon. That, that is the thing that excites the shit out of me because wait, you know, think about this. I care about my reputation dearly. I definitely care about my community dearly. Not more than my reputation. Like, you know, everyone cares about their reputation the most. So for me, what's really exciting is the three-year thing. If it was a one-year thing, I couldn't do what I'm gonna do for my community. I'm gonna throw such an un. <laughs> I mean, I'm putting all. I, you know, my poor accountant and my finance team—they ran the numbers. They're a st- they're very big numbers at at the prices that things are going right. And when I said to them, I'm like, "Look, can we talk about you know tax write-offs for?" And they were like, "For what?" I was like, "If if this company loses money, they're like loses money. What are you talking about?" I'm like, "Guys, I'm not selling a doodle like you read on the newspaper." I'm like, I have, th- I, have, I have 555 people getting 18 meaningful gifts. That's math. And these, gonna be, these aren't going to be $40 gifts. These are going to be very expensive gifts. Who the fuck knows where these people are going to live? I'm going to have to ship something to fucking Sri Lanka. Who the fuck, you know, like, so there's that. Second, this conference is going to be bananas. I'm probably going to have, what, 8,000? You know, you guys probably know this stuff better. I'm 10, 10, 255, 7,000, 8,000. Cause obviously some people are gonna have multiple, you know, tokens. And I need to throw something that's insane. Yeah, because it's if, not gonna if, be cheap. No, VCon 2022 has to be insane because if it does and it is, and it will be, well then everyone's gonna win. All the token holders can get bombarded when everybody sees what the fuck I did. Well, you know, if you have some of the biggest names in the world performing, if you have the greatest keynote speeches, those, those speakers are going to cost me money. Like this is going to be, I mean, I expect Beacon to be a seven figure production each year. And I'm not talking about 1 million. So like, you know, I'm not, I'm scared. It might be an eight figure production for the first one. I need to blow it out of the world. But even, even if that, it's a loss leader, Gary, you're building this brand. Correct. Right. Correct, and that that is it. really the long game. It's not like yeah, you're because, gonna suffer. Because, because I am an extremely successful author who has a lot of leverage, who's a free agent after this book that I have coming out. 
And first, my publisher, Harper, is going to be very interested in my books because I'm a moneymaker for them. So when I say to them, hey, remember when you signed me to that 10 book deal years ago and it really worked out? Let's, let's have a conversation here. I want to come out with a kid's book, which I do, by the way, with these characters. And I want to teach kids that empathy matters. I want to teach kids that compassion matters. But I also want to teach them that accountability matters mm. and like some other things. And the world needs but, that, man. The world needs more kindness. We're more divided than ever. We got to teach these principles. And I think that I, Gary V, am a good deliverer of information for 63% of people. But you two know this. I'm not naive. There's 30% of people who think I'm bad because I'm aggressive. I'm a Jersey kid. I curse. Uh, I have so much conviction. They feel like I'm a know-it-all or just flexing or, you know, entrepreneurship, burnout. And there's a lot of, and, and, I, and I'm empathetic to that. I don't think that those are bad people. I think, why should they spend 15 hours really understanding what I'm saying? We haven't had the luxury to really have a conversation. They don't know how I act one-on-one. -on -one. So I, I'm empathetic to that. I now have this whole universe of characters to still let me put good deposits into the world for people who tune me out. Mm. And I think anybody who's been parented as well as I have, who's grateful, who's happy. I think all the happy, grateful people have an obligation to put more good into the world. And I do that and I take the heat for it as Gary Vee. And, and now I have Patient Panda, right, to do that. And I'm gonna do that and I'm really proud of it. I think it's gonna go well. And, and, it, and I can do all my stuff, right? I can do that part while also my streetwear, sneakers, hoodies, I can go do JVs with the best streetwear brands in the world and create that part and scratch that itch. Or my, my toy collecting part, I can do that workplace warriors thing in a different form now. And, and you know, cause I was so affected by toys as a kid, you know, collectible toys. And so I'm, like, I'm really, uh, and what about my consumer package good stuff? Like I look at Workout Wolf, I just did it right now. That was the first time I thought it right now on the spot. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I could probably turn that into a protein bar or something, Workout Wolf. Like, what? Like, I, I'm gonna show the entire bag of tricks. And that's why I think the people that get behind this project have a dark horse chance of doing really well. Because if we all wake up in 22 years and the IP means a lot, well, then these, these NFTs are gonna have some meaning. Well, Gary, we appreciate you coming on. You uh, you promised us fifteen minutes, and you've way over delivered. You have many words, and and I know that you, people are gonna you, they're gonna enjoy it. Thank you, brother. You mean a lot to me. You guys grew up with me, and that's that. The last thing that felt like this to me, we were there. We were there in those conference rooms, in those conferences. Like we all remember, and that's what this is. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm coming in at the same exact time. I came in in 07, and it was really starting to really happen in 045, that second wave. This thing has been happening. I've been watching from afar. You don't think I noticed, Joe, when you changed your backdrop on Twitter to like superhero shit? I was like, whoa, 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 I like that shit, what? You know, like, <laughs> but, but I come in, I, there, there's a certain time when I like to dance, when it's a little bit more mature, because my head is not as technically, I'm consumer, I'm more consumer. So I need it to be just a little bit more mature. I've got just enough danger to understand it, but I need it to be a little further along. And, and I think we're in that moment. And I think in 24, 48 months, everyone- if, Imagine what it's going to be like, yes, 24, 48 months when the masses are like, okay, the water's good, come on in. That's right. right. We've not seen wait, anything. Wait to everybody understands this is actually social media 4.0, meaning mm -hmm. everyone's public wallet, right? I, I keep telling my friends, I'm like, social is getting more private and crypto is about to get more public. The mm -hmm. public wallet, right? When I saw Rainbow, right? When I saw the Rainbow wallet, I was like, uh-huh, right? Like, I believe that the way you look up somebody on Instagram or you Google them now, in seven years, you're gonna meet somebody in real life and you're gonna go look at their, their public wallet. Mm -hmm. You can see what NFTs are in there. And I think about, I, I, I've always been thinking about this as a long time. It's like, why are some of these folks want to put some of these photos and videos that they're sharing up on Instagram when they could go create an NFT out of them and, and then have their fans buy them with their social tokens, right? They're, and, they're going to do that. Yeah, for sure. I didn't know that you did roll, by the way. We we actually have a token on Try Roll. Awesome. We, we have the hero token, which is That's currency awesome. for bad crypto yep. and nifty show. Yeah, let, 
again, it's funny. I'm about to put out a ton of content of me in 2017, 18, breaking this shit down. And it's gonna be fun for me, right? Because I know, I know I listen. That's why. When I started getting a little louder in February, March, oh, here we go, this, now this, and I'm like, I'm like, it's just the same old thing. Like, it, you should have seen what happened in Madison Avenue when I started my agency years ago. You know, that's when I was kind of segueing from Web 2.0 to Madison Avenue. Oh, Twitter boy. That was one of the headlines. Twitter boy thinks he can do shit. <laughs> you know, to me, to me, when you don't hear the cheering, meaning for me, I don't care what, when I, all the things I accomplish, I know that I'm just another human being. And if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, unfortunately, I'll get a nice, at the point that I'm in my career, I'll get a nice 12 hours, eight hours on Twitter and Instagram, screenshots, Gary did this for me. I've done a lot of nice things behind the scenes. I, I'd like to think those stories would get out. And then it'd be next Friday and 99.9 .9 and add a hundred more nines. We'll move on with their lives in a small group of my family and my closest friends will linger, but then that's it. And so when you don't think of yourself as anything special, you don't hear the cheering. It actually makes you very strong against the booing. When people shit on me and plenty of people have mocked me to, after I launched Be Friends, you know, they've got their different takes. You know, I understand why, but I'm not devastated or in, unable to deal because I can't hear the cheering. And, and the reason I'm saying this on the way out right now is there's a lot of incredible people listening to this show because there's no reason to listen to this show. Think about who would listen to this show. You've got to be incredibly progressive, incredibly creative, incredibly cool in my opinion. And I want to encourage them because I feel like a lot of them have Pokemon or Transformers or Raggedy Ann in them, but they're scared to put it out because they can't deal with the negative feedback. Mm. And I really don't want them to because they can change their lives and be happy and putting out your art into, you know, you know everyone's like, Gary's art's shit. Like, this is fucking bullshit. And I was like, you know, Provenance is such an important part of this. I drew every one of these. Okay. Every one of these tokens comes with the video that of me actually drawing it. Wow, bonus. You know? So I'm really, like, I understand I'm not fucking Picasso, but they're not the worst. I've always- Well, I can, I can actually spot the nose on yours. I have a hard time with Picasso's figuring out where they <laughs> are. That's so anyway, I'm really happy to be part of this community. I really enjoyed being out with you guys. I'm going to wish you well. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate yeah, you. Course. YouTube watcher, what's up? It's Gary V. First of all, thank you so much. I hope you're doing super well during these times. Uh, I also want to ask you, please subscribe because my commitment and exploration of YouTube is about to explode. Stories, polls, more content, more engagement, more surprise and delight. This is the time to subscribe. I hope you consider it and I hope I see you soon.